about TGIF today, and I'm honored to bring uh, the three stars from Boy Meets World, Girl Meets World, and now Pod Meets World. Uh, it is my honor to introduce Will Friedle, Ryder Strong, Daniel Fisher. Come on out, guys! The Pod for Boy Meets World. <laughs> Hello. Oh, you guys look so comfortable. Yeah, yeah they, they take it. It's a good couch. Yeah. It's a good couch. They take care of things here. Yeah. Like yeah, they fun. do. Especially on the 20th anniversary. Uh, so I mentioned you guys are taking over the podcast world. Uh, and literally all my friends are like, wait, you're monitoring the Boy Meets World panel? I listen to every every episode. Oh, that's so cool. And you know, the, the podcast world, new and burgeoning, but still very important and very crowded. So to hear people say that is nothing short of amazing. So congratulations. Uh, who subscribed to Poppy's World out here? Give it up. All right, for anybody who didn't stop, pull out your phones right now. Pull out your podcast app and literally search for it and hit follow. Yeah, the truth is, if you're here, you probably will enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, I, how many total episodes are you up to right now? I wanted to go through and count all of them. I know you don't number We're them. in the fourth season. Yeah, we're happy. The fourth season, and then we've done an interview episode almost every week of those. So if we've done 35 Boy Meets World, or oh, no, math, math. 80, 70 Boy Meets World, yeah, 70 Boy Meets World. So we were over 150 yeah. probably episodes yeah. of the podcast. Yeah, right. That's amazing. Yeah, you still still talking. You need. We still like each other. It's amazing. You can take your shoes off if you need. I would need to very much. So. And yours and everybody else's. Yeah, I, Jordan, Jordan Power. Nice, nice. Uh, and so you just, you just recap uh, season four, episode ten, which makes you pretty much about halfway through the episodes, correct? Yeah. I, how's it been so far? You hit your, I mean, I, from my mind, hearing them, you guys have hit your groove. Um, Thank you. Yeah, it only took us so 150 did. episodes to hit a groove. <laughs> um, no, it's, not, right? it's, uh, it's been really fun. We definitely have enjoyed even the episodes that we end up thinking like, huh. I don't know that this is my favorite episode. We have enjoyed doing the recaps together. We enjoy each other so much. Uh, it's really been, it's been an incredible experience. It's very interesting that you say you think we've hit our groove because I feel like that kind of correlates to where we are as actors on the show. Right. Like I feel like on season four we've kind of hit our groove as actors, so it's kind of working, working at the same time. So let's remember this for a future episode. <laughs> right. Talk, talk, talk about, about it on the podcast. podcast. Yeah, and uh, one thing, uh, I, I love podcasting, one thing I really love about it is uh, I, I don't like to do it alone. There's some people do it alone, they, they ramble to a microphone or a camera for 45 minutes. I need someone to bounce stuff off of, yeah. I need someone to talk to, get feedback. More importantly, I need someone to make fun of as well, Right. Uh, which is which is great. Uh, but one of my favorite things, that it allows me, we have like a built-in hour of the week where I get together with my friend, where, you know, we're, we're very busy, and you know, sometimes we like, lose track of each other. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm thinking you guys probably made me feel the same way, where you know you have a built-in like, hey, we got to record an episode this week. You guys actually get together and, and, and see each other and, and are able to interact with each other. Yes, that has been really nice. We're often also amazed that we never, and I mean never, run out of things to talk about. Uh, I remember dinner last night? Talk for two hours. Talk the whole time. No, I'm not recording. Yeah, this is... And we'll sometimes get on on the computers and we start our Zooms and we're chatting and chatting and chatting and then we go, we haven't hit record, and we, we should record some of this. Like, uh, yeah, we find ourselves endlessly fascinating. Yeah, you're almost like gold in the beginning. I, I always say if you start talking, like, save it, save it, yeah. save it for the podcast, you never want to read That's it. one thing that has actually changed in our relationship is there are times where we'll be having just a normal conversation we'll be like, save it, we need to talk. <laughs> we'll talk about this on the podcast and say, but we're talking about it now in friendlies. Like, come on. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we, 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 it's been interesting, though, because the thing we've talked about before as well is We'll go a week or two sometimes without recording, and then we'll get on and be like, I missed you guys. <laughs> but we missed seeing you. So, yeah, I figured with all the time we spend together, we get sick of each other at some point, but we're not there yet. No, not yet. No, and I, I love you guys. Are, you, did, you guys describe every detail from, uh, you know, what it was like being tutored on set in the early days, uh, you know, what it was like doing the table reads, just you guys get so in depth. So, uh, I. I mean, I think us as fans really appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, exactly. We appreciate it. It was a conversation pretty early on when we first started. We were like, maybe we should just talk about what our day was like, you know, because most people don't know what a four camera show schedule was like. And, you know, for us in particular, it was a, it's a weird one because we were going to school. And so we just, yeah, that first episode, we were like, let's just walk through what, and that, you know, in general. And it's turned out to be one of those things that 
people really respond to. Yeah, I think it really inside depends. baseball, you know. Yeah, the inside baseball is always yeah. great. So uh, this is how we're going to have an audience mic right there, uh, spotlight somewhere. Uh, if you want to ask a question, uh, there we go. Oh, hi. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, are you up first, sir? Who's up first? Well, I guess you are. It's just me. <laughs> it's not just All right, me. we know. No, we're going to have 44 go. minutes of questions to answer yeah. your question. <laughs> there could be more people. Uh, kick it off, my friend. Kick well, Miss Michelle, nice to see you again. Hello, nice to see you. Uh, Mr. Friedel and Mr. Strong, um, my name is Chris, in case you didn't catch that. But um, first off, I'll let you guys speak for about the rest of the crowd. Thank you all for coming to Kansas City this weekend. It means a lot. To me. Thank you. So happy to be back. So um, a year ago, this is familiar because I mentioned to you, Danielle, that uh, met Bill and Bonnie last year. And I asked Bill a related question to what I'm going to ask now is, was there a lesson from Mr. Feeney or even Bill outside of what we see in the show uh, that stuck out to you that resonated with you and so on and so forth? Uh, you know, uh, it's hard to beat dream, try, do good, the, the final words, Mr. Feeney. Um, uh, you know, I think, like, the overall message of, of Feeney's character, which is that you're your teacher is important, and um, and the, the influence that that can have on your life, not just in whatever subject you're studying in school, but that it trickles through your relationships with your parents, with the people you love, with your friends. I think that is like just the most beautiful message, and kind of the point of Boy Meets World. Um, and that the more we watch the show, the more I'm like, you know, all of this is good stuff. <laughs> like a lot of these lessons, they. I still agree with 95% of you know everything that's coming out of Feeney's mouth, um, and that's pretty awesome. So I, I mean that's kind of a cheat, but I would say over just the overall message that you know your teachers are important and that they can change your life in, in a positive way. That's that's stayed with me. Uh, I think you know the way Bill treated us when we were kids was very much like you are not a kid, you're a fellow actor. You are we are on an e equal playing field when we're on the set. When we both have scripts in our hands, it means we are equals. Um, and in a kind of, he didn't ever, he didn't ever give us acting lessons or teach down to us. Uh, he really observed us and let us be kids. And sometimes I think his eyes were rolling back into his head. Um, like, oh, these children. Uh, but he didn't ever scold us for it. He let us be kids. And one of the things that I've really loved about Mr. Feeney on the show is seeing the way he knows everything about all the characters, all the people that he loves. He's paying attention and he's absorbing what's going on in their life, even if he's not explicitly stating that he's aware of it. And so when a character comes to him with something, he's already all caught up. He doesn't need to say, well, then start from the beginning. He just knows. And so I have taken that for myself as being a lesson for how I want to be with the people that I care about in my life. I would like, whether you are an adult or a child, I want to have been paying attention enough to your life that if you need something, you don't have to catch me up. I already know. Um, there was one specific time where he looked at me and he went, Will, stay out of my dressing room. <laughs> <laughs> and it always stuck with me. Um, I said, well, he, would, he would hit after a while. <laughs> No, I, you know, it was, he, he, I always tell people that because people ask this question a lot, what kind of wisdom did you impart? What he taught, I'll just speak for myself, what he taught me more than anything else was by example. Um, he's a very old school actor. So if your call time is eight o'clock, you're there at seven. You knew your lines, you, you, you hit your mark. You were a professional, it didn't matter what age you were. So he really taught me how to be a pro, how to, how to go, at, you know, there's, We've all worked with people that will show up a half hour late or 45 minutes late. Maybe they didn't read the script. Maybe they didn't. And that didn't fly with him. Um, so that's something that always stuck with me was just the professionalism behind the craft. And that's what I took from him more than anything else. Wonder. And Will, you got some cool lighting going on with your face, by the way. I have cool lighting going on with my face? Sweet. Yeah. yeah. Find a Comic Con Blue, my friend. This yeah. is very kind of you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Hello. How are you? Why do you have a microphone, your question? 
What was the hardest topic in the whole terror series of A Boy Meets World? The hardest topic? Uh, you mean... I'm trying to... I just would like some clarification. You mean for us to play, or...? Yeah, like to, like, clarify for the audience. Hmm. I know one that I had, I had trouble with that I know that you and I have talked about. Um, they did an episode later in the season, and they called us into the office, Danielle and I into the office, because they wanted to write an episode about how our characters, which means us, had gained weight. Um, and that was, we both put on smiles, and hey, that's going to be really, as long as it's yeah, funny, that's, that's going to be great. And I think both of us died a little bit inside. Um, so that was, that was certainly tough for me. Was, yes, that was a hard story for sure. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I'm off to have one. Really? I wondered if any of you were an alcoholic. I wondered if any of you were an alcoholic. I was honest, but let me see for you. I said you were an alcoholic for an episode. It was fun to play. I, there was like a good, a fun acting challenge. Like that's the thing. Like all the things that were tough were actually like I was excited about. Yeah. yeah. Drama. You know, prob like I would look at it and be like, all right. Yeah, so I don't know. Seriously, he said, all right, like Matthew McConaughey. All right. I'm going to go, all right. All right. That's a good attitude. That was a tough, that was fun. Yeah. Yeah. How are you? I just wanted to say that. Right into the mic. Just want to say, you guys have been a huge part of my childhood. Oh. Learned a lot of lessons. But my best friend and myself were wanting to start a podcast sometime. What is your advice to give? Oh, you have so much advice. Where do you want us to start? Yeah. Wow, we have a topic. We have a, we, do you uh, have a topic that you that you know you want to do? Yes. Okay, great. I would say uh, one of the main main things that I didn't quite realize is consistency. Releasing as many episodes on a regular basis. Uh, I did a podcast for ten years. Uh, called Literary Disco, still out there, check it out if you like books. Um, and we would only release like once every two weeks, maybe every three weeks. And you just never built up an audience. What you realize is that what people respond to the most is consistency. And, and they don't even really, I mean, obviously people care about uh, us talking about Boy Meets World, but mostly after a while, your, 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 your listeners really just kind of like being with you, you know, being, having you in their ear and like feeling like they're a part of this friendship or this group of this conversation. Um, so just consistency is like a, 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 is one of the main things. Like just call, always releasing something because people they they, they, they want to be on this journey with you. They want to be along, you know, on the ride. I also think not um, self editing as you go. Like really, truly, just have natural flow of conversation and. If after the fact you think, you know, I don't like the way that came across, or I didn't, it, I don't like the, you can always go back and edit it. But if you're, as you're going, you're in your head thinking about how is this going to be taken? How is this going to be perceived? It will come off stilted. And, and what people want to listen to is a conversation with a friend. And so it needs to come across that way. And also say, um, one of the best things we decided to do was, and it might be a little more difficult with just two people, but one person needs to kind of take the lead. If it's two people going back and forth, it can, you can be yelling over each other. One of the smartest things Ryder and I ever did was get together by ourselves and appoint Danielle the leader. <laughs> she didn't want to come back to later, but we were like, Danielle should be in charge of doing most of the work, as far as we're concerned. But no, I mean, she, she, but it's the, you, you elect the person that can get, you know, Danielle will pull us back on topic. She'll get us back on track. She'll read the, the cast list. You know, it's certain things where, if, if everybody's in charge, then you just get people yelling over each other. So having one person who's kind of like, I'll sit the lead, and then we'll go from there, is, is actually more important than you think it would be. Hey, it's worth over 100 episodes. Yeah. yeah. It's worth, and uh, the consistency is very important. Imagine if we means world didn't air every week. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Probably wouldn't have watched it in, uh, as much as you did. So, yeah. uh, the other piece of it, just start. Just do it. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. It's pretty amazing. Uh, hello. Your question? Right into the microphone. Uh, my name is Trina. My YouTube user is Trina100 on YouTube. And also on TikTok, it is TrinaYG. So, my question is for all of you. Uh, what is your most favorite memory on filming For Men's World? And also, the most favorite memory on filming For Men's World with Sabrina Coulter and Bowman Friendship? 
most vivid memory from Boy Meets World? Vivid is question or favorite? Uh, favorite. Favorite. Um, that's tough. There's so many. Gosh, there's so many. Yeah. I mean, I think my favorite memories are not necessarily about the particular episodes. I think my favorite memories are the rituals right before the live studio audience. Yeah. My favorite like memories of us as a group, of the entire cast, were always the moments where all of our adrenaline was high. We were about, you know, we had worked hard together as a team throughout the week along with the crew to get to this place where now an audience of people were there and they were ready to watch us perform and everyone's adrenaline is high, you feel close to everybody, you really feel like you've built something as a team and you're ready to go out and do this thing you love more than anything. Um, and when I think of the show and I think of what my, my favorite memories, it's always those moments of us looking at each other like, you, we can do this, let's go. Um, so that's, I think, overall my favorite memory. Another big one that's apropos this weekend is uh, our Scream episode. Mm -hmm. We had so much fun filming that. Yeah, yeah to the point that it was impossible to get through the night. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that, and that was, that was a, a big reason that that was so fun was because the whole cast was together. You know, often if you look at the show, we're split into pairs or groups of three. So like Will and I never get to work together because he and Eric, or he and Jack are off in their storyline. and. Me and Corey and Danielle, you know, like it was always sort of split up, and that's one of the few where we were all together for the entire episode. And so, as a cast, it's so memorable because it was really fun. Um, with Garmy's World, um, my brother and I directed an episode where we went to the rodeo, and it was such an insane shoot day. We had to shoot like 20 pages of exterior, which with a film with a in interior multi camera crew is a lot to ask. And we had to do a stunt with a real. It was so, and we were like halfway through the day and it started raining on us. Uh, so it was like one of those insane jobs, and yet we came through it, and it was such an accomplishment. So that's one of my my favorite memories from Girl Meets World. I'll take those two for Boy Meets World. Those were good, but the one I remember most from Boy Meets World wasn't about Boy Meets World. It was just that I, I grew up a television junkie. I just wanted to be on a sitcom. So the day that I actually booked Boy Meets World and I actually heard that I had gotten a job um, will always be one of the best days of my life. Um, and I was very, very rarely involved with Girl Meets World, so I don't, I don't really count that one. Um, but uh, yeah, booking Boy Meets World all the little rituals. Have you never done a sitcom before Boy Meets World? No. You had never done a multi-camera show? No. That's crazy. No. The first time I'd ever been in front of the... Well, I mean, and did you land on a Nickelodeon? That's so I don't know why I put Nickelodeon in quotes. It's an actual thing. <laughs> yeah, it's a real metal. It's a real metal. It's like it's going to be on television. No. Um, that is so good. Cool. Nickelodeon was like... Never thought about that. No. My first actual sitcom I'm playing a part in there's a yeah. small start was Eric. Wow. That's I first saw someone with Batman. I do well the first time. After yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah, it's downhill after that, but the first time, you beat right out of the game. Right out of the game. Yeah. Right off the bat, it's hit grand slam. Yeah. Well, I mean, again, the, the first show I'd ever gotten was already picked up for thirteen because they did the pilot with another actor who played Eric, and there was another actor playing the dad, and so they made some tweaks, um, and they brought in new characters. So by the time I got there, I was on a show. Like we were going. So it was. Uh, yeah, it was crazy. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Come on up to the mic, my friend. Thank you very much. Great question. Hi, friends. Hi. Hello. Nice to see you again. Yes. So I just wanted to say that it has been great getting to know the podcast because it feels like we get to know you guys even more. Not just your characters from Boy Meets World or Girl Meets World, but now I know things that writer loves Survivor. You know, Danielle has a bunny that went around with Andrew Keegan, and then of course, you know, Will loves Mash. So those are things that's great to know now. You guys have all more of a personal level. So my husband and I, we grew up watching Boy Meets World separately, and then we found each other and started watching Girl Meets World together. And now we're traveling, seeing Pod Meets World together. So it's pretty cool um, that we've been able to do that and share that in our lives. I'm so happy that we are the foundation of your marriage. <laughs> we will take all the credit. The Topanga shirt is the only shirt of a girl my husband's allowed to wear. I love it. <laughs> 
But my question for you guys um, is, do you realize what kind of impact you have um, as far as people that grew up and now are re-watching it as a family? Or I know um, you guys met our son today, Brody. We can't wait for him to grow up watching it. And now we get to show him the picture we took today. So that's going to be pretty special when he gets older. So do you guys know what kind of impact that is on people? Because it's made a huge impact on us in our lives. Thank you. Uh, we've really come to learn it. Yeah, with, recently. You know, really over the last few years. Yeah. Um, both meeting people at conventions like this, where you come up and tell us stories like you just said, um, but then really through the podcast. You know, like we have the Podmeets World Show at gmail.com email account, and you guys send us your emails and. Um, the, pop, the live tour where we did meet and greets and so many of you came out and shared your stories with us and um, it's really had a massive impact on us. I think before that we had the general understanding that the show was special to people but I don't know that we understood it on the same level that we have come to understand it over the last few years and we so appreciate the way you guys sh share your stories with us. And you know, it, it's a very, it's a wonderful feeling to know that the years we spent putting all we had into the show came across on screen and made a difference in your lives. So it's it's always a pleasure to hear. Thank you. Thank you. Guys. Thank you. Thank you. Come on up to the mic. Hi there. Uh, just wanted to say thank you all so much for spending your childhoods helping us get through ours. Uh, we learned so much from Mr. Feeney, but you guys helped us understand it from the kid perspective. So thank you for taking your time and doing all of that. Um, a lot of your voiceover work is also special to a lot of us too. So I was wondering if you could kind of comment on, you kind of started to go into the camaraderie on the set. Is that been your experience when you've done voiceover work in the past? Or, you know, what is that art form like compared to your time on Boy Meets World? Um, it, it, it's, there's that same kind of camaraderie, there really is. I mean, it, it obviously changes project to project, which Boy Meets World, we had seven years to be together and really get to know each other. But, um, and you're together every day, you're rehearsing every day, you're in school together every day, where, you know, like Kim Possible, for instance, we, I think I'd met Christy four times by the end of the series. So it was, you know, she was going to school in New York. We were shooting, we were recording in LA. We'd record once a week for three hours. So you get to know each other and you become friendly with people, but you, it's not the same kind of family. We, we don't like to use that word a lot when it comes, because at the end of the day, you're, it's, you're a professional and you're doing a job. And I think people throw that word family around a little too much, but, um, so it's, it's a different kind of camaraderie, but it's certainly there, and, and this is now changing, thankfully, the, the voiceover world is opening up a little more to people, but when I really started back in the day, there was, like, it seemed like 50 of us doing every show. So everything you walked in, every time you walked in, you were with the same 10 people every time. Um, and so you really got to know people, but a level like this, especially a level like this with the three of us where we're doing Podme's World and traveling together and our families know each other. I mean, that's very, very rare. So um, I definitely have liked way more actors than I haven't liked, but it's a very small number of people that I'm this close to, if that makes sense. Yeah, thank you. Well, thank you very much. Come on up to the mic. Hello. Hello. Thank you for being here. Um, two part question, kind of. Um, in your time away from Boy Meets World and Girl Meets World, have you thought of episodes that, like, you're surprised that was never made, in a way? Or, second question, if you could make any Boy Meets World episode with yourselves as writer or director, filming yourselves in the past, which ones would you choose? Great question. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> I think we'll get the first one, actually. I, I got the second one. But the first one was, what episodes do we wish had been made? Yeah. Ah, okay. Like, you're surprised that show was... That I'm still confused by the second one. If, 
You get to go back in time and be a writer director with us as your cast. What episode of Boy Meets World do you make? And there's so we're writing writing for ourselves. Ourselves. Yeah, or directing, yeah. So uh, you're going to okay. go back and work with young us and make an episode of Boy Meets World. What do you do? Any other direction away? Thank you for clarifying. I was like, wait, we're, we're okay. dropping into Lauren. Go back. And I get it. Okay, yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> um, what do you wish they made? That's I, yeah, that's basically it. What do you wish they made, and what would? I, I mean, I just would like. I think going back, I would do every year. We should have done like the Scream episode, like a, an episode where we like either spoofed a genre of a movie. You know, like we just kind of, if we were more like community where we just have like a one off crazy episode yeah. every season yeah. where we could all work together, that would have been really fun. News Radio did that too, just yeah. weird random. Yes, and so that's what I would go back and do is like give us all a chance. I guess we kind of did now that I say it. Yeah, like rest the time travel. travel. The time travel episodes. Yeah, the 50s a lot. It's Mr. Yeah. Bucky over here when you watch those episodes, you're like, what is this? Yeah. <laughs> Why am I in the fifties all of a sudden? Why do I talk like this and you're a guy boy? What are you saying? Or he talks like this. What's going on? Oh my god. Fine. Uh, I go I you know, really the answer is I would go back and have us work together. Like have I just love to like be in scenes with with you guys more. Like yeah. we're halfway through season four and we've talked to each other maybe twice. Yeah. yeah. That's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. And then there's like yeah. there's this Lip service given to like Sean and Topanga are friends. No, we're not. I think it'll happen later, but so I would go back and do that. Um, and I definitely would go, yeah, I would probably go back to like second or third season and do something in that realm because they, they could have used some help. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think, I think season one Topanga was so well defined. Yeah. You knew exactly who she was, and she was quirky and offbeat and unique. And I understand, as we've talked about on the podcast a little bit, I understand that once a character is going to be in every episode, uh, there needs to be a certain mainstreaming of that character. Otherwise, in every episode, they are a caricature instead of a real, like, relatable part of the normal world character. Um, but I feel like after that first season, there really wasn't a whole lot of character development for Topanga outside of the fact that she was Corey's girlfriend and that Corey loved her. And I, I would love to see more development of who Topanga was. And, we, you know, we had Trini, Brittany Murphy play a best friend, but she was only there for two episodes. We don't really... Um, she mentions other friends. I think there was one episode where... She had a friend. We talked like she has a friend, but then we never see that friend again. Uh, so I think I would probably go back in time and devote a, one episode and maybe season three or season four where we get a little more world building of Topanga's and we get to know who she is as a teenager now that she is not quite as quirky and offbeat as she was in season one. Uh, I would like, especially towards the end, if they ever tried to give Eric any sort of a romantic relationship. Yeah. I mean, they just never, they, it's like, all right, everybody else, hook up with somebody, really learn your character, now Eric, go dance in the corner and be fun. <laughs> um, and I think it would have been nice to have more of a depth to Eric and, and maybe find uh, somebody, some kind of partner that could have settled him down a little bit, I think would have been an interesting way to go. As for your second question, I still don't fully understand it. <laughs> so I'm gonna say 18. <laughs> no, I, I would have. I would like to. You know, if I was gonna write something, I would have written exactly what Ryder was talking about. Where every season we would have. I know we kind of did it, but it would have been the most out of body, crazy. Like the show News Radio. Once a year, they would start with Phil Hartman looking at the camera and going, "Hi, I'm Phil Hartman, and we're gonna do something totally different tonight." Tonight, News Radio it takes place on the Titanic. And they would all do an episode on the Titanic. They did one in space. They did one. So doing something like that as a total ensemble, I think, would have been a whole lot of fun. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that was like an SAT question there. Yeah. Like, but, yeah. And, uh, I think you... no, it was well worded. I just didn't understand it. That's just why, uh, much like the SATs. Yes. <laughs> uh, you all get 1600. So well done. Well done. Hello. Your question. Why didn't the microphone? Good to see all three of you again. Hi. Hi. So my question is, as a fellow podcaster, you guys have the best podcast when it comes to rewatching. So 
Polymorph's world is amazing. Oh, thank you. So I gotta say, what I love about your podcast is the chemistry and the strength. So how has the podcast strengthened your bonds? Well, Jacob, right? Yes. Okay. Why don't you give a shout out to your podcast? <laughs> What's it called? It's Jake's Take with Jacob Elishar. J A C O B E L Y A C H A R. Okay. Thank you. Nice. Um, Ryder has strengthened our bond. I think that's <laughs> just the way you said that. <laughs> you know what's great about it is that I think we always kind of, you know, pushed each other's buttons and intentionally and teased each other. And it was always part of our dynamic growing up and being adult. But I'm so much cooler with it now, like, and, and because the audience has kind of been in on it and the feedback has been that that that's okay, and that that's actually what they like the most. And I, you know, I, I don't, if anybody listens to the podcast, they know this, I am very, I'm more uptight, I'm a little less prone to, like, teasing, or, like, the end, like, I think it's cool. I think it's great. So, like, I think now I'm much more, hopefully, less sensitive, yeah. more willing to, like, roll with, like, the punches, or give a little punch every now and then, and just have fun and enjoy that that's, that is what constitutes our relationship. Yes. Uh, I agree. I think, he, I, I'm, I mean, that's such a good answer because it's true. I think the thing that um, I love about it is that, you know when, when someone, like you say something about your family and you're like, oh, my mom. And then somebody else is like, you know, your mom. And you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I'm allowed to say that about my mom. You're not allowed to say that about my mom. That's kind of how we could feel about ourselves. Like, when other people maybe would poke fun at a characteristic or a trait about us, it feels, like, pointed and hurtful. When these two do it, I actually really take it as like a, hmm, I guess I do do that. <laughs> and, and that's okay. I'm flawed. And they still love me. And if anything, it helps me love myself it, with all my flaws because it has just given me a self-acceptance knowing that they see me for who I really am and are still in my corner. And so that has made, and I think that also comes through, the love we have for each other, everyone can feel. And I hope you guys feel that we have it for you as well. Definitely. It really has helped point out Danielle's flaws. <laughs> um, that's what's, what I've got for the podcast mostly. It's like, I didn't she's from the sun, so this flaw. Uh, no. <laughs> you, you know the thing? It's just, oh my God, this is gonna sound so hokey, like I'm making this, but I swear to God this is the truth. And this is why the writing on our show was so good. It really has show me that you don't have to be blood to be yeah. family. It's it's so it's such an important message of the show, but I keep my world very, very small. I deal with anxiety and it's just I, I from the time I was, you know, nineteen or twenty and it's just it makes my world very, very small, so I'm very careful of who I allow into it. And that's not always the best trait, but when you allow the right people into it, they open your world up for you. And that's what they've done for me more than anything else, is they've allowed me to be comfortable being uncomfortable. And it's pretty great. And that's because of her flaws. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Happy fighting, sir. Thank you, David. Come on up to the mic. Oh, I am so nervous. <laughs> I know. This is like a dream come true for me, so I'm just taking this in, seeing you guys here. I've watched Boy Meets World three times Yeah. at different stages of my life. I've grown up with uh, Sean, Corey, and Topeka, quite literally, watching it the third time through now in college. So, um, First, a uh, little housekeeping. If I had a nickel for every time I heard about the Scream episode, I have a lot of nickel <laughs> but i love it because seeing you guys all together was one of the best episodes ever so and then will your comment about eric having a romantic interest was really great to hear because a lot of people agree with you 
about how they wanted more for Eric, and I'm conflicted because Eric was my crush. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Eric had enough love to go around, that's fine. <laughs> he really did, he really was so lovable and so wonderful, so everyone was lovable and wonderful. <laughs> Okay, so my question is, uh, I wrote it down. Boy Meets World taught so many phenomenal lessons, truly, and great storylines and character developments. But, <laughs> were there ever any storylines or character moments that maybe didn't sit well or resonate with you guys? I don't remember thinking it at the time, but when we watched the episode where Sean had the pig, and Topanga was so determined to get rid of that stinking pig. I was like, lady, mind your business. <laughs> so I don't remember thinking it at the time, but in the, in the rewatch of it, it bothered me. I wanted to like reach through the TV and tell Topanga to leave Sean and little Cory alone. <laughs> um. It's funny because the rewatch did it for me as well. I, and I had completely forgotten my part in this episode entirely, but the Thanksgiving episode where the Matthews joined the Hunters at the trailer park. And I get why they had to do it because they had to make it seem like there was a huge class difference between the two. But Eric, I thought, just came off like a jerk that entire episode. Yeah, so that was one. And that's what I love about doing the rewatch is I completely forgot that storyline, completely forgot, I knew, I remember the episode because it's hard to forget the episode where the cabal of tra trailer park people come to try to kill the Matthews, um, but Eric was just such a jerk that I completely put that out of my head, so seeing that again was like, ooh, I didn't, I didn't like that at all, so yeah, that retroactively did not sit right with me. Yeah, I mean, we talked about on the podcast a lot of the Corey Topanga stuff. Uh, but at the time, none of that bothered me. Yeah. You know, when we were filming it, I remember thinking all the Corey Topanga stuff was romantic. It was romantic and made sense, and now I look at it and it, it feels really, um, yeah, lots of red flags. But, um, <laughs> but, at, at, but at the time, I remember, and we haven't gotten into this on the rewatch uh, for the podcast, but at the time, like, I remember all the, like, prom, honeymoon, yeah. Corey Topanga, will they, will they not sleep together stuff. I hate it as a teenager. I remember thinking, this is so dumb, and like, this is getting a lot of attention, and I just don't know if anybody cares. Uh, I, I wonder how we're gonna feel when we get into it. Um, so yeah, I remember at the time being like, this didn't, it didn't feel, ac it didn't accurately reflect the conversations I was having about sex at the time with my contemporaries, um, and a bunch of, you know, at the time, 45 year old, men were basically writing about teenage sex lives. That felt weird. Um, that definitely felt weird at the time, and I'm sure it's going to when we get there. Yeah, stay tuned, everybody. Stay yeah. tuned. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. What was your name? Oh, it's Alexia. Alexia. Come on up to the mic, my friend. Hi. Oh. Hi. First thing, I want to just give some background to my question. Um, so growing up, I started watching it when I was like seven, eight, now I'm 18, almost 19 this year, and my dad forced me to watch Girl Meets World actually, because he used to watch Boy Meets World growing up, so he's like, this will help you learn life lessons. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to say I've been growing up watching you guys, and then this year I ended up watching Boy Meets World, and I see like all the positive effects on it. And I hear your guys' voices on other Disney shows, like Ryder, I Love You, as Tom on Star vs. The Forces of Evil. Yeah. That's my favorite Disney show. Thanks. So, um, But my question here for you is, how does it feel to see younger people come up and say how much they've enjoyed watching you guys on Girl Meets World and Boy Meets World? How, just how does it feel to see younger people you pro approach you to that? So great. It's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. It, it, I, I, to me, it speaks to the strength of the writing. You know, it's, it's hard. I think that aspect is harder for us to take any credit for, you know, um, because it really shows that, that even though we were very much of the 90s, right, in our clothing, in our language, in the way we, our hair, like there's so many things that we look back on that we were presenting, that we were putting out there, that were very much of the moment and very dated, and yet 
the strength of the writing and the, and the sort of archetypal character, like the characters, has made it extend beyond its time in a way that I think a lot of shows in the, from the 90s didn't or don't have that, that same level. And so I don't think we can take as much credit, you know, but I think I, I, it, it, it does make me feel really good about the writing of the show, that there was, some sort, there was something a little more eternal going on in the writing. Absolutely. I couldn't add anything more to that. That's exactly the way we feel when we talk about it amongst ourselves all the time. And it's the thing we notice the most doing the podcast is like, wow, this show is great. And it's not about our individual performances, although we have moments where we say that was terrible or that was really good. Um, but the writing, it's the thing that's made it last and speak to generation after generation after generation. And, you know, I mean... It, it, the people ask us like, oh, when people come up, like, what would you say you're out the average age of your fans are? It's like, honestly, from like 22 to 46, and then sometimes even six, seven, twelve. You know, like it's it's, and that's because the show can speak to you no matter which age you are. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> come on, Hi. Hi, I'm Noah, and I'm just wondering if Eric can do the finny call. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I, I, I get asked to do the finny call, but I don't do it anymore. Aww. I'm so sorry. I, a number of reasons. One, I gave it to the girls on Girl Meets World, but I gave it to them because it was kind of taken from me by the producers without really asking. So because of that, I passed it on to them, and they do it from now on. But I, I appreciate it. <laughs> hey, Ari. <laughs> And I just heard one of the younger generation of people that walked in. Yeah. There you go. That was your chance, Will. How's it going? Hi. Um, so my question. Oh, well, sorry. Um, so I grew up watching you guys, and then my now my daughter is starting to watch Girl Meets World, and she's very much a Topanga and a Riley. So what would you say to the Topangas and the Rileys of the world? Uh, to the Topangas and the Rileys, I would say no matter what, don't change. Like, just continue on the path that you're on, and even if you feel like an outlier, um, eventually the thing that makes you different is going to be the things that other people eventually love and appreciate the most about you and wish that they had. So just stay true to who you are. Thank you. Excellent advice. Thank you, Thank you very much. She's dressed like Topanga with the red lipsticks on. Her what you still remember the dance? Of course. Of course. Use a mirror, babe. <laughs> I was wondering what your favorite location that you filmed on during the show was. Like, I knew you went to Disney World and some other places. <laughs> He's so good. He gets to go to Disney World. World. It's still inside a while. <laughs> Look like it was fun. <laughs> So, Will, is your favorite location the back lot, or... Yeah. No, you went to... Single back. It did send me to Lake Placid, Lake Placid. in nine-degree oh. weather. You had a lot of fun. had fun. I had fun. I got to skate with Nancy Kerrigan. I left three toes there, but I had fun. <laughs> That's way better than Disney World, where you can ride the rides all the time by yourself. I feel like yeah, there's an answer. I'm not I'll sure. get over it eventually. I know, but I'm like, did we really shoot in too many places? We didn't. I mean, well, you got to do the, the, the yogurt cup episode. Right. That's right. I did get to go to Griffith Park. <laughs> <laughs> Which is 20 minutes from the studio. And I'll say, you're right, Ryder. Uh, that's true. I, I often overlook that. Uh, <laughs> I think you've been on location more than... I know because because I literally only went to Disney World and a wrestling match. <laughs> with and was it, was it, was it Disney World in Paris. Uh, <laughs> match. Went to that one time. Um, so those are the only two, and yeah, the wrestling match was really, really awful. We never. I I wonder if we're, I think we're one of the few shows, especially one of the few quote unquote family shows that went as long as we did, that did not do a big. Vacation. Yeah. Hawaii. Hawaii, yeah, Australia. Yeah, Hawaii. Australia on uh, uh, oh. Modern Family. Like every one of these shows eventually goes somewhere, yeah. and we never had that. Just Disney World. <laughs> Sorry, Will. Uh, Disney World was great. It was super fun. 
we had the run of the back lot, all of us had, uh, you know, VIP uh, guest relations cast members in their their vests, their plaid vests, taking us to the front of any line of any ride we wanted to. It was pretty great, not gonna lie. Yeah, they were awesome terror terror party. 14 yeah. times, just yeah. as many times as we wanted. Yeah. We had this porta potty at Griffith Park. <laughs> it was almost not broken. It was great. A lot of fun. Thank you. I love your outfit. Thank you. It was right by the horses of travel time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The pony rides. We gotta go back and do a vacation episode. Yeah, your own trip to Hawaii where you find a magical idol that causes... Yeah, that's, that's, that's a great episode of the Brady Bunch. Yes, it was. Uh, your question. Hi there. Um, I grew up watching Boy Meets World and met my husband who also grew up watching Boy Meets World. And then we accumulated the box sets and watched it all through dating and marriage and um, we still wind down at night with our box sets. Because so they're greenier than the Disney right. Plus versions and feel better when yeah. you watch it. <laughs> um, I watch, um, so you guys are our comfort show and I'm wondering what your comfort show is. Will, I might be able to guess. Yeah. But Do you guys want to say mine? <laughs> Bash. <laughs> <sighs> Do I have a comfort show? Isn't your comfort show shutting off the TV? Oh no. You know, I didn't watch TV much as a kid, which I nobody likes that person who says that. So sorry to be that person. But I didn't I like that person. I know you are. I don't have a TV. Hey, you got Ryder liking you. Nice. <laughs> uh, That's always when you're like, ooh. I didn't watch a ton of TV as a as a kid. <laughs> Or even now, as an adult, what your comfort show is? Um, even as a little kid, did you ever have any cartoons? Sesame Street. I did watch Sesame Street. Sesame Street. Uh, and so, yeah, it was really fun when my kids, when I had children, and then I was like, I'm going to put Sesame Street on for you. And then they didn't care about Sesame Street. And so that was disappointing. Um, I don't know. I like the idea of a comfort show. Um, I guess you know what I would say? I did, as an adult, watch all of The Office and all of Parks and Rec. And either one of those shows, if they are on, it's my feeling of like, oh, I don't watch that enough. I should watch that again. So those are probably my two. Right, did you have a comfort album? Yeah. No, seriously. What you put on at night to go to sleep? Well, well you know, the, uh, what I do, I, I listen to podcasts and audiobooks. That's like really what I do. Um, and so, like, the podcast that I listen to is Hello from the Magic Tavern, um, which yeah. takes improv fantasy thing that I just love. And I, I fall asleep to that um, every night. Or when it, you know, so I love that. Um, but, you know, I've actually, uh, with my son, when he was little, we started watching Octonauts. And I find Octonauts to be the most soothing, yeah. pleasant, yet still educational. I love it. Uh, and that's just, like... And my son still loves it. He's nine, but if, if like if, if a new Octonauts season came out, we would be like right there. All right, so Octonauts is pretty comforting. I feel that way about Bluey. Oh, Bluey. Oh, yeah. I love oh, Bluey. 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 Yeah. Well, I could do. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we're gonna take one more. So uh, whoever's coming up next, uh, anybody? <gasps> all right. It's all you, my friend. That is the best child cosplay I've ever seen. Yes. <laughs> How old are you? Seven. How old are you? I mean, eight. What's your name? Eight years go by fast, don't they? Okay. My question is, like, how did it feel like when you didn't go to Disneyland? <laughs> <laughs> well, what did it feel like when they told you? You're not going. First of all, your comic timing is impeccable. Incredible. You're a little genius. So brilliant. I think I'm going to remember this entire weekend is that moment right there more than anything else. They also told you Stacy Keenan was going to be there, yes. and you had really wanted to meet Stacy Keenan. Yeah. And then they said she will be at Disney World, and you will not. What did that feel like? I think I also put on some weight that week. Oh my God. <laughs> you were your feelings. You know what it felt like? It felt like I 
while I was horribly disappointed, I knew that I had to keep going because the strongest actor had to stay back <laughs> and anchor the show while the not necessary actors went and rode some rides somewhere. So, That's a valid point. Yeah. Great question, though. That's a good question. That was awesome. That's a good question. Uh, we're going to end on that. I'm going to start with Bill Fenley to sing in the Disney World. So, uh, Ryder and Will, thank you. So, if you guys are doing your tables all weekend, so yeah. cool. Give them experience. Thank you guys so much. 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 Thank you gu